Hola amigos, Dr. Labrunaki. Today, I'm gonna to help you be successful on the AP Spanish Literature and Culture Test with this presentation of the authors and titles that we need to know for the reading list. And there's 38 of them that we'll need to know about. All right, vamos a empezar. So if this is your first video that you're watching, um, take a look at my other eight previous videos. So I was originally only going to make eight videos in this series, but there was a couple more items that I thought of. So this is a bonus one and stay tuned. There's another bonus video coming after this. Okay, so what do we need to know to be successful on the Spanish literature and culture test? We need to memorize the authors and the titles. There's 38 of them, make flashcards, in the description below, in the comment section below, I'm gonna post a link for a Quizlet that I made where you can practice back and forth between connecting the author and the title until you've got it memorized, and that's gonna give you points on the test. So why do we need to know this? Well, there's a short answer question on the text explanation portion where they're gonna give you the title of the work and an example of the work, and you need to name the author and then also the time period. So in our next lesson, I'm gonna help you with the time periods or the movements. But in this one, I just wanna keep it short and simple. Um, let's practice the 38 readings, the titles and the authors. Let's work on that first. And on the test, if you can just remember the last name, that is sufficient to get full credit. If you can remember the full name, great. But if you just remember the last name, that will be sufficient to get you full credit. So keep it short, simple and sweet. All right, number one, in no particular order, we got Dos Palabras by Isabel Allende, Romance de la Perdida de Alama, which is Anonimo. And so this comes from medieval time period. And since it was so long ago, it was probably originally an oral tradition. And so whoever created it has been lost long ago. And eventually somebody put it down onto paper and now you're reading it and enjoying it. So I'll try and give you some tip, tips and background information if there's things that I want to point out. All right, Hombres Necios by Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, which translates as Foolish Men. And so she's one of the first feminists and she's trying to help there be equality, which is still a theme going on today. All right, Mientras por competir con tu cabello, Luis de Gongra. So while competing with your hair, and so this one's kind of a silly one that I've got here to memorize this, but in our textbook, there's a little character of him and he does look like a creeper a little bit. And so I think of he would kind of be the type of guy who would be interested in some girl's, some girl's hair. All right, Mire los muros de la patria mía, Francisco de Quevedo. And so for this one, again, in our textbook, there's a little character of Francisco de Quevedo and he's got these little spectacles with these uh, round lenses, and I just see in the los, in the muros, um, I see those two circles, and I think of the spectacles when I see los and muros. So kind of a strange way to think of it, but that's that's um, what you need to do is make some uh, connection on how you can remember these. All right, we got Soneto, Benti Trace, and Tanto que de Rosa y Azucena, got Garcilaso de la Vega. So for this one, I think of Vega means meadow, and you probably know the city Las Vegas, which means the meadows. Well, I like to think the Rosa and the Azucena, the rose and the lily, grow in a meadow. And that's how I make a connection with Rosa, Azucena y Vega. All right, Rima Cinquenti Tres, Boberan, Las Oscuras Golondrinas by Gustavo Adolfo Becker. So he writes in the Romanticismo time period, which means there's a connection with nature and golondrinos being swallows, a type of bird is the connection to nature. He andado muchos caminos, Antonio Machado. So if we look at his initials, A-M-A, and I look at andado muchos, again, I see that A-M-A, and that's how I make the connection with that one. En una tempestad, José María Heredia. Joseph Mary Heredia would be the translation. And so in this one, the storm or the huracán, I think maybe um, somebody is praying to Joseph and Mary to protect them in the storm. Here's how I make the connection between this work and the author. A uh, Roosevelt, Ruben Dario. So Roosevelt starts with R and Ruben starts with R. Connection there. How about Peso Ancestral, Alfonsina Storni. Mujer Negra, Nancy Morejon. 
Um, again, let's take a look at our initials, N-A-M-A. -A. Now here they're reversed. We've got M-A, N-A, Mujer Negra. But um, look at the initials and the letters that the poem starts with. They're in reverse, but the N-A and the M-A can make a connection there. Uh, Julia de Burgos. Julia de Burgos. No need to make any connections for this one. This one is a freebie to figure out who wrote this one. Balada de los dos abuelos, Nicolás Guillén. Walking around, Pablo Neruda. So for this one, he wrote it about his confusion of being in Asia and all these different languages he did not understand. So this is the only title that, that's in English. Prendimiento de Antonito el Camborio en el Camino de Sevilla, Federico García Lorca. So the rest of Little Anthony, the Camborio, and Route to Sevilla. So Antonito, um, he stresses in this one, the innocence of little Anthony with the diminutive instead of Antonio, Antonito. La Casa de Bernardo Alba, Federico García Lorca. So there's only a few authors that double dip on the list. So the first one is a poem, and the second one is a play. Mi caballo mago, Sabine Ulibarí. La segunda carta de relación, Hernán Cortés. Um, so if you think Hernán Cortés is a little bit uh, devious because there probably wasn't a first letter and so he entitles his letter the second letter implying that his first one got lost trying to cover his basis for going to Mexico without permission from the emperor or in Spain or the governor in Cuba. All right, you got Don Quixote, Miguel de Cervantes, El Bordador de Sevilla, Tirso de Molina, or Gabriel Tellez, so he's got a religious name and a regular name, can go with either one. La Soria de Tormes, Anonimo, and the reason why this one is anonymous is because it criticized the Inquisition or the Catholic Church, and that would be a no-no back in those days, so the author chose not to reveal himself or herself. Como la vida misma, Rosa Montero, El Conde Lucanor, Juan Manuel, Borges y yo, Borges and I, Jorge Luis Borges, so that should be a pretty easy connection, Borges y Borges. And then also by Borges, we got El Sur, the south, La Noche Boca Arriba, Julio Cortázar, what an interesting story, the night face up. So in Spanish, the, the night mouth up, in English we say the night face, night face up. Chac Mool. Uh, which is uh, a god of the Aztecs or the Maya by Carlos Fuentes, um, the god of rain. Uh, again, a very interesting story. El hombre que se convirtió en perro, Osvaldo Dragoon. So I think it's a strange title, and Osvaldo Dragoon seems kind of like a different name to me. La Siesta del Martes, Gabriel García Mar Marquez. And again, he's got another work here. El ahogado más hermoso del mundo. Very, very interesting short stories that I love for the twists at the, at the end. Visión de los Vencidos. So originally in Nahuatl and then translated to Spanish by Miguel Leon Portilla. So he's not the author, but the translator, but that's the name that we're going to go with here. Nuestra América, Jose Martí. Talks about why our America is just as important as European literature tradition studies. Las Medias Rojas, Amelia Pardo Bazan, kind of a sad story. El Hijo Horacio Quiroga, another muy, cuento muy triste. Y no se lo tragó la tierra, Tomás Rivera, and the earth did not swallow him. Okay, so he hung in there, and just like you can do for the test, uh, you, will make, you will make it through this test. All right, La Noche Buena, Tomás Rivera. So um, typically, La Noche Buena is Noche Buena, one word, and capitalized because it means the good night as in Christmas Eve. But here he purposely has separated the words and uncapitalized it, used lowercase n-a or minuscula to add an emphasis to his story. And ultimo, no oyes ladrar los perros, Juan Rufo. So again, you need to memorize the author and the title of all 38 items for the reading list to be successful. You are going to get questioned on one of them and have created a link to a Quizlet where you can practice these. All right, so if this is the first time watching my video, I've got eight previous lessons. In lesson one, I explain what is the AP exam. 
Lesson two, interpretive listening and reading analysis. Lesson three and lesson four go together in one video about the short answers. There's a text explanation, text and art comparison. Lesson five and six are in a video about the essays, text analysis, text comparison. Okay, um, lesson seven, just vocab, 50 terms that can help you. Uh, lesson eight, exam tips. And now I've got a couple of bonus videos where I'm adding as I go. All right, so if you click the subscribe button, you'll get free access to all my videos. And this is Learning Spanish with Dr. L. All right, gracias por mirar, buena suerte en el examen de AP. Chao y adios.